church. God is ready. Are you ready, church? I want to welcome you to Lyles of the Valleys. It's the place where you can experience real hope. If you're tuning in today, we want to encourage you to experience real hope. Give him praise. Everybody just begin to praise him. Lose your mind today. Get out of your comfort zone today. Just praise God for his mighty works. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for he is good. He is worthy. There you go. Give him the praise, church.
good and faithful. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Can you just close your eyes and just lift up your hands and just continue that sweet worship? It's beautiful. He loves it. He inhabits the praises of his people.
much you adore him and thank you for his goodness, for his protection, his deliverance, his healing. Let's just exalt the mighty name of Jesus. God, we love you, God. We worship and adore you, Jesus. Lord, God, for everything that you are, for everything that you've been. God, we love bless you, Jesus.
choose to believe the word of God or choose to believe what's going on in our minds. And I know without a shot of a doubt, we're choosing the way of the Lord. We've never been steered wrong. So when you're up against an obstacle, when you're up against something that is just, you don't see a way out. Choose to believe God has. you see in front of you, no matter what you feel, choose it and see the reward of the Lord, his blessing, his joy, his peace. Choose to receive it. I was, uh, I talk about my mom a lot, and I was visiting her yesterday, and we were talking, she was talking about how crazy the world is, um, and we're using up all our resources, and I was trying to interject the Lord and say, you know, well, that's why we have a hope in him, and this world is going to pass away, and, and she said, I just, she said, that religion is good, she goes, but I, I just can't believe, and she's, you know, very unreceptive. And so in those moments where I'm just rubbing her shoulders because of her arthritis or rubbing her hands, all I could do in my mind was just say, Jesus, just Jesus, you know what she needs. Just, just calling on his name, even in my mind, because I know if I say it out loud, she'll just roll her eyes and be like, let me watch my shows. Just in my mind, I'm just silently calling on his name over her because I know the power in his name and I know the hope that he has. And he has that for you this morning. If you're online, if you're here in the building, I encourage you, whatever you're going through, just call on his name and see what he'll do in your life. He is so amazing, so wonderful, and there's power in that name. Jesus has all power and all might, and there is nothing impossible and no situation too big for you. So if you're going through something, or even if you have a loved one, I wonder if you could just call on his name for them.
just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Speak. 
I pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, you gotta believe it. You gotta speak up the name of Jesus over your family. Maybe you have a lost loved one out there. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, he's over, he's Jesus over your doubt. He's Jesus over your fear. He's Jesus over your darkness and loneliness. He's Jesus over your addiction. He's Jesus over your marriage. He's Jesus over your son and daughters. He's Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, let's begin to shout the name of Jesus this morning. Man, he wants to do something in your life this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We pray today for still little, Lord God, for she has very sick. She's going to the hospital. She'll to with COVID. Lord God, I pray for her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, you'll begin to, to, to do something in her body, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray for Sister Wilkes. She broke her foot. Lord God, I pray right now that you'll begin to heal her, Lord God, and cover her. We pray for Brother Taylor, Lord God. From He's recovering from surgery, Lord God. I thank you. You got him out of surgery, Lord God, and help him in his recovery, Lord God. I came for Caroline Bautista. She's sick, Lord God. We have Sister Barnes that's sick. Come on, we have people that are sick today. Sister Evelyn, Lord God, the Moore family, the Hall family, the downtown Carter, the Codas, the Ross, Sister Griffith, Sister Cindy, Sister Little. We pray for all of them. They're all sick. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you'll visit them where we're there right now, Lord God, and begin to produce some healing into their bodies, God. In the name of Jesus, that you'll get the victory over this all. We pray for Sister Little, Lord God. We pray for Gina Delgado, surgery, recovery from surgery, Lord God. Sister Sharon and Mitchell and her mother need healing in the name of Jesus. We pray for the missions team in India, Lord God, that's walking there right now. Wherever they're at, Lord God, protect them. Lord God, guide them, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, let signs, workers, and wonders happen wherever they go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, let your word be put forth in the name of Jesus. We pray for Elder Zamora, Lord, Lord God, recovering from surgery as well, Lord God. We say for Sister Valerie Maria, she's in a hospital today. I pray, Lord God, that you bring healing into her body tonight. Brother Fuller, he needs healing, healing from neck and back pain. We pray for him, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. You see his faithfulness to this church, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now. Come on, lift up your hands while you're at. Begin to worship God where he's at. Right where you're at right now, he's there to heal. He's there to restore. Hallelujah. He is your answer. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give a hand clap of praise. As they put the video on for the announcements. If the people of God started handling money God's ways. too hard to get to the end of your life and have nothing to show for it. This is my family's legacy that I'm talking about here. I've got to have a plan and be focused. That knowledge that you pass down to your kids, that is how you change a family tree. You change your life when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you have that moment where you say, I've had it! I'm not going to live like this anymore! Praise the Lord, Lighthouse of the Valley family and friends. This is Brother Harry Centeno with some exciting news. Financial Peace University class is about to start in the next few weeks. My objective as a financial coach is to help you win with money by using biblical principles and becoming a good steward with what God has blessed you with. The Word of God says, if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly riches, who will trust you with true riches? We must recognize the times we are in and how to respond in those times, trusting in our leadership. We are in inflationary times, and the experts are saying the average household will need an extra $500 per month to keep up with these times. As you re recall, the last financial peace class that graduated in May of 2022 averaged a monthly savings of $524 a month, which has them ready for the times we are in today. Let me tell you about Sister Patty, who graduated with that last class. She paid off $46,000 in debt and is now today debt-free 
with an extra $1,300 a month to live like no one else and give like no one else. God will only give you what you can manage and God will only fill the capacity you make available to him. Money only becomes an issue to someone in the absence of value. Think about that. What you value and what you give yourself to will grow. So I, so I encourage you, excuse me, to give yourself to learning and to understanding God's way of handling money so that you may grow in wisdom. For the Bible says, whoever finds wisdom finds life and prosperity. In this class, you'll learn how to use a snowball to turn $1,000 into a $10,000 emergency fund. You also learn how a minimal wage earner can turn 15% of their income into a $2 million nest egg for retirement. You also learn how to use real estate as a hedge against inflation. And you will learn the best insurance policies to have to protect yourself and your assets. So do not delay any further. Go to lighthouseofthevalley.org. Select events, select financial peace class, then select join the class, then select the $59.99 package. And the classes will start August 3rd through September 28th at the Fellowship Hall from 7 p.m. to 8.45 p.m. God bless you and hope to see you there. If you want the potential leaders under your ministry to be high functioning, you have to prepare them for it. Purpose Institute puts that training in your hands like an archer's bow. The curriculum focuses on biblical and leadership training and is taught by local pastors and leaders. PI challenges students to put into practice what they've learned in the classroom, encouraging them to participate in missions endeavors, personal evangelism, and local church involvement. PurposeInstitute.com Praise the Lord, Lighthouse of the Valley. This is Sister Otero. I'm here to speak to you about Purpose Institute. As believers in Jesus Christ, we may not always understand God's purpose for us in His kingdom. 2 Timothy 2.15 talks about us studying the Word of God and to be workmen that we not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. In 1 Chronicles 12.32, the children of Essachar had understanding of the times. Purpose Institute is that vehicle that will direct us into God's purpose. Purpose Institute is a ministry training institution. Um, purpose Institute assists in developing uh, individuals' uh, skills as well as developing their purpose. Purpose Institute makes apostolic training affordable to everyone and it's also um, taught around the world. In Purpose Institute, if you go to their website, you will notice that there is an archer with a bow and arrow directing to a target. That archer is our instructors and the bow is the instruments that we use to teach our students. The students are the arrows and the target is the world. So as the students gain all their knowledge, the archer will pull back on the bow, release the arrow, and send those students out into the world to preach the gospel and to do what God has um, prepared them to do. In uh, Purpose Institute has two semesters. One starts in the fall, which is from August to November, and the second one starts in the spring, which is from February to May. Lighthouse of the Valley will be starting its fall semester this August through November of 2022. It is, uh, will be starting every um, Saturday and Sunday of each month. You can enroll as a full-time student or a part-time student. On Saturdays, we will be meeting from 8 to 4.20 p.m. and on Sundays from 1 to 4 p.m. The topics that we're going to be um, discussing will be first, introduction to God's Word, the Pentateuch, the importance of apostolic doctrine, apostolic patterns and, and methods, leadership, Remember what the Bible tells us. In Hosea 4, 6, the people perish for lack of knowledge. But in Acts uh, 17, verses 10 to 11, it tells us that the Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians because they received the word, but they also searched the scripture to make sure that things were so. As the world is in confusion, let us not be deceived by lack of knowledge. Let us be, let us be like the Bereans who search the scriptures to find truth. 
Purpose Institute is that method that we can use so that we can equip ourselves in order to attract, equip, and send others out. If For more information, you can go to lighthouseofthevalley.org, fill out the registration form to request more information, or you can go directly to purposeinstitute.com and sign up for classes. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact me or Sister Liz Barnes to gather more information, and I hope to see you this fall in August at Purpose Institute. God bless. <music>
All right. How's everyone doing today? Amen. Praise God. I do want to say as far as the singles are concerned, that's 18 years old. You have to at least be 18 years old and above till at least 100. 100. We'll cut, we'll cut off at 100. So if you're 100. <laughs> so you got to be at least 18 years old. No 17-year-olds and 16-year-olds trying to sneak in there and be in with the adults and wait till you become an adult. You, you're there. You're right on the edge. But, you know, amen. We're going to take in uh, our our communion at this time. And, and for those of you that have never been with us during times of communion, and uh, I just want to go over a few things that are very important uh, for us to know as we take it. If you have children that are uh, young and they've never been either baptized or been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and given their life to Jesus Christ, we would ask you to help them to refrain from taking communion. You as a parent have to make that determination as to where your children are on their walk with God. Uh, we, we won't make that determination for you. We give that over to you as a parent. So we want you to be very, this is a, a very serious deal that we do here. We reverence uh, remembering the Lord and taking of his cup and also of his bread. Another thing that I want to make mention of is we do not ascribe to transubstantiation for some may uh, understand what that means, and I'll kind of break it. What it means is we do not believe that uh, this literally turns into the blood of Jesus Christ, nor do we believe it turns into the literal body of Jesus Christ, and then somehow it uh, returns back to that after we finish with our uh, uh, remembrance here. But we believe that it is actually juice and that it is actually uh, bread or um, a wafer of some sort that we remember, and we're going to show you that through Scripture, that we remember the Lord's death until he comes. We do not um, believe that this magically turns into his blood nor into his body, okay? Also, we want to say that God has a, a, a thought about this and that he wants us to consider what we're doing. And so in just a moment here, I'm going to pray with you. I'm not praying I will pray for you as well, but I'm actually praying with you, even for myself. The Bible says when you come to a table like this and you're ready to take communion, that you should examine yourself. You should take a quick look on the inside of your own heart and really discerning whether or not you have ought with each other. And, and that's God's main concern is how we treat each other because the way we treat each other is how uh, the Lord will look at us. And he says that, that by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one toward another. This is not by how much we speak in tongues, not how much we give, not by how much we do works for the Lord and all that we do, but it's by the love we show towards the body of Jesus Christ. And of course, we're supposed to love the world, but we love each other first and we love ourselves and love each other and love God. So we've got to examine whether or not we have some art. Now, in saying that, uh, I want you to realize there might be some things that you may not be able to solve today. That's not the point, that you solve every issue before you come and take of the Lord's Supper. No, it, meaning that you have a determination within your heart, within your mind, that you're going to do something about it as best you can do. In other words, you're going to pray about it. You're going to say, God, I need to get over this. You might have some serious offenses that people have offended you, but the Lord wants you to forgive them. That's a command of the Lord. You've got to forgive them if you want him to forgive you, but you're determining that you're going to forgive and that you're going to allow the Lord to have his way. So you're making that today. So let's all stand for just a moment. And I want us to pray that God would just have his way in our hearts and examining ourselves. You don't have to talk out loud if you don't want to. I'll be begin to pray and I'll begin to talk out loud. But if you want to join in, you can. But let's just ask God to forgive us of our sins. If we need forgiveness for something we've done against him, sinned against the Lord, or sinned against our brother, our sister, someone in the world, or someone sinned against us. Lord, help us to get to the place where we can forgive. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that you'll search me from the top of my head down to the soles of my feet, that you'll begin to examine me, Lord God, on the inside. Let there be an introspective look on everything that goes on with the body, soul, and spirit of this man. So that, Lord, I'm not just frivolously coming and taking of your bread and of the, the juice here that we have today, 
But Lord, I pray that God, I'll remember you in all this. And not only you, I'll remember the body of Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll remember my brother and my sister. Lord, those, Lord, that you've asked me to serve and those in the world that you've asked me to serve. Lord, if I have aunt somehow, I don't believe I do, but if I'd have something deep down in my spirit that I don't even know of, Lord, bring it to the surface so that I can deal with it, Lord, and get it right, right now. I pray for my brothers and my sisters, Lord. I pray for those online even that are watching right now in the name of Jesus and by the authority of the Word of God. Lord, allow us to be clean. Let us have clean hands, pure heart, and no deceit before you. That's who's going to appear before your holy heel, Lord. Those that have clean hands, pure hearts, no deceit and no idols before them. I pray in Jesus' name that you'll begin to release us into the freedom of forgiveness. Allow forgiveness to be in our tongue, not only in our tongue, let it be in our spirit that we can forgive. Let, and that doesn't mean they're getting off the hook, Lord. It's just that we're asking you to forgive us for holding something against someone else. Uh, and we're setting them free. Uh, and then you're in your hands, God. You do what you want with them. Uh, they may have offended in a mighty, strong way. But in Jesus' name, uh, you're able to do greater things than we can ever imagine. Uh, I pray, God, that we have a clean slate as we come to this table today. That, Lord, you said if we confess our sins, uh, you are faithful and just uh, to forgive give us our sins uh, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That covers the whole gamut of everything. We ask it in the name of Jesus uh, and we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Can you say in Jesus' name? Amen. Before you come and, and take one of the packets that we have here, we just ask that you come reverently. In other words, not a lot of conversation going on. We'll have time where you can step across the aisle and greet each other and have conversation. But this is a time that is part of our, our communion ceremony. And we'd like for you to come at this time. You can just take one and then return back to your seat. said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, for as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But he says, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body, in other words, the body of Christ. If you don't know how to already, just peel the first layer off on top and it will reveal the wafer. Paul went on to say in verse 23, he said, For I have received of the Lord that, that which also I delivered unto you, 
that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat at this time. If you'll peel back the second part, the juice will be open. Verse 24 of the same chapter, Paul said, And when he had given thanks, speaking of Jesus, he break, I'm sorry, after the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. We can drink it this time. Hallelujah. Let's just thank him for what he did for us on the cross and the shedding of the blood, the breaking of the body, the salvation of man's soul. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Without him dying on the cross, he would not be able to say we're forgiven. But because he went to the cross, as John said it best, behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin, that one sin that went upon all men, the sin of the world. Lord, we thank you, and God, we honor you for everything that you did for us. And thank you for that blood that it flows from Calvary all the way to the 21st century and beyond. We give you glory and honor. It's because of the blood that we're able to stand here as one people. It's because of the blood that we're able to be reunited with each other in harmony and unity and the ability to do what we do. Sing it with us. It's the blood. Oh, from day to day. It will never, never. It's time. Reaches up. And it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The blood. Oh, from day. If you believe that, I believe you do. At home, go ahead and praise him. Everyone, let everything that has breath praise him. Let him, all the instruments praise him. Let every creature that has voice and air in your lungs praise him. Let everything that has breath praise him. Praise ye the Lord, for he's worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you dominion. We give you power. Lord, we thank you for what you've done for us. Ha! Jesus, we praise your name. We give you all of it, Lord, right now and here. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Go ahead and put your hands together one more time for him. Praise God. If you like... If you feel comfortable, you can step across the aisle, greet someone you don't know, let them know your name, and tell them you're glad for them to be here at Lighthouse of the Valley on this Sunday morning.
turning stream. I stepped in the water, the water was cold. Till my body, but not my soul. You don't believe I live to be. Follow me down to the turning stream. I stepped in the water, the water was cold.
because he's unmatchless, he can take care of you in your situation, no matter what you're going through today. At this time, we're going to take up the tithe and offering. And so as we all stand, that's a perfect song for right now because there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on that is putting a lot of people in a lot of turmoil in their minds and everything. But if you trust Jesus and you just follow the principles that he's laid out for you, if you follow the pathway, it may seem dark, it may seem like it's not going to work out, but David said, that, Yo, uh, Yea, that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So it doesn't matter what you're going through in your finances. It doesn't matter what's going on at the job. God's going to take care of it if we're faithful in our giving. Amen? Lord God, we ask that you will touch our giving today. Lord God, touch our tithing. We thank you that we're able to come into this place. Lord God, we thank you for everything that you've done in this country. We thank you that for everything you're doing in this city, for what you're doing in this county, in this state, Lord God, and every individual family and life. And God, I pray that you will anoint the offering today, Lord God. And somebody who feels like they can't give, I pray that you would just help them in their giving today, Lord God. That you will be able to pour out something that they cannot receive, Lord God. That they don't have room enough to receive Jesus. That way we may be able to be a blessing to people to those, oh God, who need the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that you'll bless everyone in this place, oh God, and touch the offering in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, go ahead and make your way forward. Give your author offering. If you don't have it physically, you can also go to our website, lighthouseofthevalley.org, and give online. But hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. And the song we're going to be singing is Believe For It. And so we have things that uh, we need to believe for and personal promises that the Lord has given us. But if we let our hope just slip away, it makes you sick, whether, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, it makes you sick. But when the desire comes, meaning if you actually hold on to that seed of hope and you watch it grow and it actually comes to pass, it is a tree of life, and you're like, you know what? It was worth believing it, whether my family believed me, whether friends believed me, whether no one else believed me, but I'm glad that I held on to that hope because when it comes to pass, you can brag and say, God did that. Amen.
Go ahead and stand at your feet all around this place uh, and give God the praise for he deserves it all. We thank him for everything that he's doing in the midst of all things that are going on. We have a God that can see and that can do anything. He sees all things and he can do anything. He is not able to be put in a box. He cannot be captured and put down. He is the Lord God of all creation. He has all power and all authority and he's committing it unto the body of Christ to carry out his plans. Lord, we thank you and God, we give you all the praise. Amen. I want to welcome all of you to Lighthouse of the Valley. Those of you that may be visiting for your first time and maybe even online, if this is your first time with us, we welcome you here and hope that you'll have a great experience and great time. But more importantly, that you would have an encounter with Jesus Christ. It's, it's one thing to gather together, and I'm not much on gatherings in those kind of ways, but I do believe that when, every time we come together, something supernatural happens in the atmosphere. We don't do it like everybody else, and Lighthouse of the Valley may not be a good place for you. But this, if it is a place for you, jump right in there and become part of everything that the Lord is doing through this branch of the body of Christ. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. As we recognize our independence and the 4th of July and everything that's happening and the festiv festivities and everything that's going to go on, we want you to take part of those things and enjoy those things, but also remember that, you know, everything that we have was done through someone's sacrifice. Even the sacrifice of what gathering together as a church today was because of the sacrifice of the Lord's Son, Jesus Christ, and being able to be together right now. Amen? Amen. I want to just read you something about Independence Day. It's also called the 4th of July in the United States of America. It's the annual celebration of na nationhood. It, it comm commemorates the passage of the Declaration of Independence by the Congress, the Centennial Congress, 4th of July, 1776. Independence Day is celebrated tomorrow, July 4th, 2022, in the United States. In 1776, Congress had voted in favor of independence from Great Britain on July 2nd, but did not actually complete the process of revising the Declaration of Independence originally drafted by Thomas Jefferson in consultation with fellow committee members John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, and William Livingston until two days later, which would be July 4th. The celebration was initially modeled on that day of the king's birthday in England or Great Britain, which had been marked annually by bell ringing, bonfires, solemn processions, and oratory. Such festivals had long played a significant role. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, in the first part, New Living Translation, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed or divided by internal conflict. That's the problem. Any kingdom, whatever kingdoms you have, that has internal struggle and conflict, there's a problem. Paul said it like this, in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. To will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. He said, there's a war going on in my members. I want to do right, but sometimes I do wrong. The things that I want to do, I do not do. And the things I don't want to do, I do. Uh, there's this struggle going on on each and every one of us. And I want to warn someone who will become born again. Uh, if you're not born again yet, uh, don't think you're going to be delivered uh, from the internal struggle. Your spirit will get born again. Uh, but your flesh, uh, your natural man, your mind, your will, your emotion, your soul will always uh, be at odds uh, with that born again spirit uh, that's inside of you. That's why Paul said, that is in me, that is in my human nature, that is in my flesh, that is in my carnal mind, that is in my human thinking, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Why? Because there's something going on. That internal struggle is what we've got to worry about. What's happening on the inside? I can look good. I can dress good. I can talk good. I can act good. I can do all the right things. But if if I don't deal with what's on the inside, there's going to be a problem. Never forget that the, an internal threat 
is far more dangerous than the external attacks, the internal threats. That's why going into and infiltrating, and I've done this as military and, 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 and in law enforcement, is infiltrating certain places just for the certain per, per, the express per image and express uh, reason to be able to infiltrate what was going on there and to become part. And the whole job uh, was to disrupt everything uh, that was going on on the inside. Uh, that's the major threat. Uh, the major threat is not how they come against them uh, and try and stop them. The major threat is, uh, is there someone embedded uh, in this organization uh, that can help bring this organization down? Uh, is there an internal threat going on? even in the church uh, that is trying to undermine and go against what the church uh, is supposed to be doing. That is what we have to be concerned about because that is what can do more damage uh, than anything else. Uh, there was a guy by the name of Gorbachev. Some of you young people may not know who he was, uh, but Gorbachev, before he was taken out of power, he wrote a book called Por Perestroika. And in that book, uh, he said, whatever nation, he was prophesying uh, about the time when he would topple. He said, in that book, he said, uh, if I'm ever overtaken, uh, he said, I will join myself to the country that overtakes me and I will destroy from within. Para Stroika, I will begin to destroy from the inside uh, the people that take me and engraft me in. Uh, that's why you need things in place uh, that will deal with that kind of stuff. And I'm telling you now that even right now, serving the Lord and trusting the Lord and lifting our hands and praising Him, we got to make sure that we are not being used as pawns uh, by the enemy to war against God through division in 2nd Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 and through 5 also verse 8 and 9 New Living Translation uh, Paul gives us this warning he said you should know this Timothy in the last days there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and money they will, be, they will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to parents uh, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. Uh, they will be unloving and unforgiving. Uh, they will slander others uh, and have no self-control. Uh, they will be cruel and hate what is good. Uh, they will betray notice their friends, uh, be reckless, be puffed up with pride uh, and love pleasure, pleasure rather than God. Uh, they will act religious, uh, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that, Timothy. Uh, these teachers oppose the truth. Uh, just as Jannes and Jambres opposed Moses, uh, they have depraved minds uh, and a counterfeit faith, uh, but won't get, they won't get away with this for long. Uh, someday everyone will recognize uh, what fools they are, just as Jannes uh, and Jambres did in Moses' day. Uh, somebody needs to know uh, that we've got to be alert uh, on guard uh, and looking around, uh, not with our heads in the sand, uh, but speaking the same thing uh, in love uh, and walking in unity, uh, that there will be no division uh, among us. Uh, and when the divisive spirit starts raising up, uh, even within the church, uh, you need to address it and not just take a silent row in the back. When I first came into the church in 1986 and I observed some things and at my job I have to observe a lot of things but I observed something when I came into the church that there was the church and then there was the group outside the church. So although I had a lot to say, I listened. And I learned later, you got to be Quick, slow to speak, and quick to listen. And they, some have said that's why God gave us two ears, right? So I'm listening. And what I was listening to was undermining what's being preached, what's being taught, what's being disseminated. And I was hearing all this. So after a while, I started lifting up my voice in the groups, internal. Okay. Paul said, I pray that your eyes, of your, your eyes of understanding may be enlightened. In other words, that you would get some insight to what's really going on. 
And I was seeing things, so I began to address it rather than just taking a passive look at it and say, well, you know, that's what you guys do. No, this is wrong to my peers. Because I had a bunch of peers in my hyphen group back then. I was 26 years old. So in, in my hyphen group, so I had some influence in that I could say some things. And I would say, no, brother, that's wrong. Didn't the pastor say? Didn't the word of God say this? Where, how read you? I don't know much, but I know what that says. Okay. I, I, I don't know much about it yet, but I do know what that says. And I believe that God means what he says and he says what he means. Uh, why not us just follow the leader? I've learned this in other aspects of life. Why should it change when I come into the church? Why can't I just get with the program? If it is the right program, uh, I need to get with it. To, and like my pastor's wife said to me one time, I'm sitting back there. I wasn't a worshiper. I didn't lift my hands. I, I didn't do any of that. If I did, it was one of these. One of these. <laughs> and she said, Brother Mike, get with it. I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Worship. Well, what does that mean? So she demonstrated and showed me how to lift up holy hands in the sanctuary to praise the Lord with all my might, to learn how to dance before the Lord, to learn how to do something for the Lord, how to express myself, because I'll do that other places. And if I'm excited about certain other things, I'll do those things. But when I came to the church, I felt like this is just what I saw. This is what you do. Rather than give him all. Every, all part. I'm a dramatic person. Why not be dramatic? So she set me free, and I listened rather than listening to the, the factions that were in the pews. I started straightening it out. Don't be a Jannies or a Jambres. There are three kingdoms that Satan wants to divide and conquer. First one, Satan wants to divide and conquer the kingdom of God. This is Christ in his church. In Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21, amplified Jesus gives a clue about the kingdom of God. He said, now having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he replied, the kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed or a visible display. Nor will people say, look, here it is, or there it is, for the kingdom of God is among you because of my presence. They didn't realize that the kingdom of God was not only among them, uh, but one day was going to be in them. Uh, he said, I come unto you. Uh, I am with you, but shall be in you. According to John chapter 14, there's coming a day. If God is with you right now, there's coming a day that he wants to live on the inside of you. The kingdom of God uh, is coming to your house right now. You may be that Zacchaeus, uh, and he was in a tree trying to observe Jesus. Uh, he said, Zacchaeus, come out of that tree. For today, I'm coming to your house. And God is saying to someone in this place, someone watching right now, I'm coming into your house. I'm getting in your world. I'm getting in your business. I'm going to bring you into the fold. And Satan wants to divide that. Us from Jesus. The body from the head. We are the body and he is the head. And you cannot separate the two. If you try and cut the body off, you're going to sever it from the head. So the enemy wants to destroy. He wants to disrupt. Uh, he wants to conquer. He wants to divide uh, the kingdom of God. Notice in Luke chapter 20. I'm sorry. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11, how Satan tried to divide the head from the body. Most of you know this story. When Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, the Holy Ghost led him. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward unhungered. 
And when the tempter, the enemy, Satan, came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, he used the word of God, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Uh, then the devil taketh him. He didn't work there. So he went, taketh him to an holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, uh, saith unto him, uh, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down uh, for, I'm going to use some scripture on you, Jesus, uh, for it is written, uh, he shall give his angels charge uh, concerning thee, and in their hands uh, they shall bear thee up, lest at any time uh, thou dash thy foot against a stone. Uh, Jesus said unto him with a comeback, uh, for it is written, uh, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Uh, and again the devil's coming with his last assault. Uh, again the devil taketh him up into an high, up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he saith unto him, all that you got to understand, when he said saith, he's using a perfect tense here. He's saying he kept on saying. He didn't just say it one time. You know, you're just saying, oh, he just came in and went. No, no, he just kept on driving home this way. He saith, he continues to say, and he keeps on saying it. All these things I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him, Jesus. And the devil only left one of the book writers said, for only a season. I mean, he's coming back. The devil wants to divide us from the head. He wants to divide us from Jesus and distort our vision of who Jesus is. Jesus is the expressed image of the invisible God. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Jesus is God in work clothes. Jesus, as they said in Matthew, is uh, uh, Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. In him, Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in a body. It pleased the Father that all the fullness would dwell in him. If you have seen Jesus, you have seen God. If you want to see God, all you got to do is see Jesus. There is one throne in heaven and one that sits on the throne. It's the one with hair as white as wool and his eyes, the flame of fire. And out of his mouth goes a, a two-edged sword and his voice as the many waters. His feet are like their brass as they were burned in a furnace. It is the one which is, which was and is to come. The almighty God. It is Jesus, uh, the one that has on his vesture the word of God uh, because the Bible says uh, in the beginning uh, was the word uh, and the word was with God and the word was God uh, and the Bible says the word was made flesh uh, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of full of grace and truth. Jesus. Division. The body can never be separated from the head. The body's got to embrace the head. Satan wants to divide and conquer the kingdom of God, but he also wants to divide and conquer the kingdoms of the world, nations, nationalities. That's why you see all this stuff going on. Distractions, what I call it. I'm not involved with all that. We'll deal with it, but we're not involved. We deal with it right here, baby. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. On our knees in prayer. If my people which are called by my name, if they'll do it, if they'll do it, if they'll humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land and forgive their sin. Jesus. He wants to divide the kingdoms of the world, setting us at odds with each other on this planet. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 through 4, New Living Translation, Paul stated this. If the good news, the gospel we preach is hidden behind a veil, something that divides. It's hidden behind a veil. It is hidden only from the people who are perishing. Satan, who is the God, little g, of this world, has blinded, he's separated, he's put a wall of petition, he's divided, he's blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness or image of God. I'm telling you that the Lord wants to, us to tear down those walls of petition, but you're not going to do it with these. You're not going to do it with this. You're not going to do it with that. You're not going to do it anything like that. You've got to come to the Lord and say, here I am, God. I am yours, lock, stock, and barrel. And I'll tell you, when you begin to intercede, when you begin to pray, when you begin to believe, God will allow those blinders like he did with Saul of Tarsus. The blinders to fall off, the scales that are on the eyes, the dividers that don't allow them to see Jesus just right. All he heard was a voice. All he heard was a voice. He was knocked off his horse. This is before he became the great apostle Paul. He was always named Paul when it came to the Gentiles, but he was named Saul when it, in, his, in his lineage and how he dealt with himself as a Hebrew. Here he is getting ready. Go take out some Christians. Put them in jail. Hail men, women, and children. And the Lord appeared to him. Knocked him off his horse. A light came down. The ones who were with him heard the voice, but they couldn't see in the light. This light blinded him. And the voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus. The head has to have connection with the body. There was a a light and a blinding there that wouldn't allow him to see into the light, but the voice let him know that I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. I'm trying to prod you in the right direction, and the whole time you're kicking against what I'm trying to do. I want you to just go in the direction that I'm trying to send you. And Paul, he heeded to that. He was blind for three days, but then a man came and said, Brother Saul, the Lord has appeared to me and told me to come to you that that you might receive your sight and that you might receive the Holy Ghost. And oh yeah. He received his sight. He received the Holy Ghost. And that day he was taken to the waters and he said, arise now and be baptized. Everyone, he said, be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Division. The enemy wants to divide the head from the body. He wants to divide the kingdoms of this world so that they can't come in. Let's never get comfortable with what we have. Let's never get comfortable with just our family making it in. Let's never get comfortable with just feeling like I've done all that I can do. I don't care how old you are. Elder Duck, I don't know how old you are. But Elder Duck, through his sickness and through everything, in his twilight of years, he was the first man to put a hammer. He and Elder Hensley were the first men to put their hammer to our first work that we broke ground, or not broke ground, but remodeled this building over on 10th and B. The first ones to do it 
And years later, here he is, 27 or so years later, here he is uh, coming in uh, on the walker. Uh, he can't even hear me right now. He comes in here not even able to hear me. And he just comes in here. i got to be in the house of God. Uh, i got to be with the body of Christ. Uh, I'm not going to sit at home. Uh, I'm going to be with the body of Christ. Uh, Yes, I'm connected with the head, but I want to be connected with the body, and I don't want any division. I'm going to have to give an account for him one day, and I kind of have a feeling what I'm going to say. Number three, Satan wants to divide and conquer not only the kingdom, God, but the kingdom of the world, but also the kingdom of our homes, the kingdom of the home, the family unit. That's probably where his greatest assault is right now. Because if I can get this, if I can get your children, that's why all these agendas and everything right now that you know they're focusing on is your children. <laughs> Disney's focusing on your kids, buddy. And I'm not going to go too much into that because you say, oh, he's, hiding. he's not meddling in my politics. Well, you your politics should be out at the door. I'm talking about righteousness. That's why he wanted to get Moses as a little guy. Why well, he wanted to get Jesus right there. Okay? If I can kill him now. He's trying to get the home. He's trying to separate the fathers. He's trying to separate the mothers. You think you just can't get along. It's more than that. We need to look no further than the divorce statistic and the fatherlessness. One source reports that in the United States, about 50% of married couples divorce. The sixth highest divorce rate in the world. Subsequent marriages have a higher divorce rate, second marriages. 60% of second marriages end in divorce. And 73% of all third marriages end in divorce. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 18.4 million children, that's one in four, live without a biological step or adoptive father in the home. That's enough children to fill New York City twice or Los Angeles four times over. There's a problem, Houston. There's an elephant in the room, folks. And it's all about the enemy trying to come in and destroy the family unit. We are different. I am a man and that is a woman. And we came together and we are different. And God says, I want you to take your differences uh, and I want you to become one. Man shall leave his mother and father and shall cleave with inseparable glue unto his wife. And then the man's got to learn how to love his wife uh, as Christ so loved the church. Uh, and the wife needs to learn how to submit to her own husband just as she submits to God. Uh, it doesn't mean he's going to rule over you. It just means we have roles to fill and we can do whatever he wants, but this thing has to survive. Well, preacher, you've been divorced twice. Yes, I have. And that was probably one of the biggest issues that I had coming into the church. I was divorced twice before I was 26 years old in the military. And probably had Christ not come into my life, I'd be five or six more. Because it would be my way or the highway, period. That's just the way it's going to be. And the Lord decided to intervene. And begin to change my thinking and then change my mind. I'm not right about everything. So he brings a woman into my life some 30, 31 years ago and brings her into my life. And now I understand. Now I know even as I'm known. Now I understand I had to become a man because when I was a child, I thought as a child. I spake as a child. I understood as a child no matter how old I was. But when I became a man, I had to 
put away some childish things, uh, some childish thinking, uh, some childish ways uh, of having tantrums uh, and having my way of violence uh, and doing things through violence. Uh, I had to put it all away. So I'm assured that it can work if you'll work it. All you got to do is talk to the one I love and let her testimony of my life be the truth. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 through 9, New Living Translation, the apostle Paul declares, stay alert. Watch out for your enemy, the devil, your great enemy. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm, families, against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering. You're not the only one that's having marital issues. You're not the only one that have children that want to do what they want to do. You're not the only one that is saying, where do I go from here? We've got a body of believers that outweighs this room and this city and this country. And the Lord is saying, uh, they're having to go through too. But start building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Start seeking the Lord uh, while he may be found. Uh, Begin to lose yourself. Take up your cross uh, and follow Jesus Christ uh, and say, if I've got to suffer loss, uh, I will suffer the loss of all things uh, that I might obtain him. Uh, And begin to love uh, and submit one to another and watch what the Lord will begin to do inside of you. Begin to die to what you want and die to what you think and die to what you believe and begin to embrace only. It is written. It's so simple. That's one thing I noticed when I came into church and I said it not to the church, but I said it to myself. These people are simple. (laughs) And you'd only know that if you'd understand where I was coming from and the people I've dealt with in this world. And I looked at the church, and I said, these people are simple. It's not hard to figure out. But I asked God, make me simple. Let me not be removed from the simplicity of the gospel. I couldn't articulate that word back at that time, but it just make me simple. Help me to accept things just by faith and to trust you with all my heart all my soul, all my mind, all my strength. Help me not to to try and work things out my way and take things into my hands and and take all these matters and try and deal with them uh, the way that I feel like I can deal with them. Lord, help me to submit myself unto God uh, and then I can resist the devil and he will flee from me. Uh, Lord, hide thy word in my heart uh, that I might not sin against you. Let your word be a lamp unto my feet uh, and a light unto my pathway. Allow me, Lord God, to have the word of God uh, that's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, any weapon that I can hold in my hand. uh, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of my heart. Lord, I want to one day maybe have a wife. I want to one day maybe have some killed children. uh, But Lord, this man right here has to change. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, in the latter part of Scripture, Jesus declared any kingdom, my parentheses here, even God's kingdom, divided by civil war is doomed. A town or every city or family, every household, splintered by feuding will fall apart. No one else, they thought you were the perfect family (laughs) until she walked out on you. Until he got up and never came back, went out for milk, never came back. I told you that story because this is my MO, modus operandi. Married six months, whatever it was, she did something I didn't like. First apartment, no kids, 
30 something years ago. And I got so mad. It was probably because she didn't make my sausage the way I want them. Something like that. Something as goofy as that. It wasn't anything. And I said, you know what? I'll leave you. She looked. Really? I said, you don't believe me? I went in there, went in my closet, grabbed all those clothes, put them on the sheet, folded them up in four ends, told them there, put it like I'm on my back like a hobo, and I came out of that one-bedroom apartment. I said, you have anything to say before I'm gone? She said, no. <laughs> I walked, got down there in my car, threw that stuff in the trunk, got in my car, and started up, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, look at you. It's what I do. It's the way I respond. I'm a preacher at this time. I'm in Bible college at this time. Look at you. But God was dealing with me. On the outskirts, the enemy was trying to divide this family because he sees down. Well, he can't see down the line, but he knows there's something in me, and there knows there's something in her. He knows there's some destiny on us. And, and, and here he's trying to divide us before it even gets started, before we had Michael, before we had Alex, before we had Annalisa, and they're working in their own ministries and doing what they do, before we're able to have Tiffany in our lives. All of these things. He said, look at you. And I repented. Came back upstairs and she said, You back? I said, Yeah. <laughs> Threw that stuff on the bed. Never did that again. Something broke on the. I'm talking to some men right now. Something needs to break. Why do you think it keeps failing? I'm talking to some ladies right now. Why do you think it keeps failing? It may be that you're the one that needs to change and say, come hell or high water, you might be on your ninth, your ninth wedding anniversary right now. You need to say, this is it. This is it. This is it. Through everything. Through everything. She's mine. I'm hers. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> you can't kick me out. She's never, done, she's never tried. I'm sure she wanted to, but she's never tried to kick me out. <laughs> In John chapter 10, verse 10, New Living Translation, the devil is referred to as a thief. And Jesus said, the thief... The thief's purpose, his reason for doing what he does, is to steal, kill, and destroy. He does not care about you. The grass is not greener on the other side. It still needs to be watered. It gets brown. It gets weeds. So you might as well deal with where you're at. And I'm closing here. How do we avoid division? It's not exhausted, but... Just a little something. How do we avoid division? Number one, we avoid division by knowing what division is. <laughs> if I'm going to avoid division, I mean split vision and all that kind of stuff, I've got to know what the vision is for us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, New Living Translation, the Apostle Paul said, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony, this is what he wants, with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. God wants us to get back to Genesis, back to the book of beginnings, to back where it all started. Tend to it and protect it, Adam. Walk with your wife and enjoy her. Even name her if you must. But what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. What God has put together, and he's put this church together, he's put these marriages together, he's put these families together. What God has joined together, let not man... Even when we provide ourselves a way of escape, let not man put asunder. I'm to let not man divide it. Uh, let not any other creature divide it. Uh, the Bible says uh, that we need to understand uh, that God is the one that's doing all this, not we ourselves. 
Know what the vision is. Number two, avoid. To, if we, we avoid division by embracing the vision personally. Not trying to please other people. But in embracing this vision, God's vision. Not my vision. Not my friend's vision. Not even the pastor's vision. But God's vision. This is one book of vision. Seeing things through his eyes. Without it, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there's no prophecy, the people perish. Where there's no word from the Lord, the people perish. They sink. They're divided. They make up their own way. But study to show yourself approved unto God, workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Going through it and seeing what it says. In 1 Timothy 4, verse 12 through 16, New Living Translation, Paul instructs his son in the Lord, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Until I get there, Paul says, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers and teaching them. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. All of it. Embrace it. Everything. Throw yourselves into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. We've got to bind this thing like frontlets on our eyes and our foreheads. We've got to put it and hide this word in our heart for the inserted word is able to save our souls and to keep us from falling. We need to live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God and this is his word, his holy writ. We need to get to the place that we're embracing everything that's in here, even the things that don't taste that good. They may be sweet when you first taste them, but by the time it hits your belly, it may be sour. And every bitter thing, for those that love God and embrace him, for every bitter thing will become sweet if you'll understand that he wants you to embrace this lifestyle and let them there be no division about this. If you really want to not have, not have any division, start living by this. It's either specifically written out or the principle is there. Can be drawn from there. What I need to do. Man, you slap me. Oh, natural response. You don't know me. <laughs> Natural reaction. That was not a good idea. But I'm a changed man. I'm a changed man. I'm a changed woman if you're a woman. What does the book say? What does the word say? If I'll guide all my responses based on what's already written... I'll become like Jesus right there when he was going through his time of temptation. I'll refer back to this. If the first thing that comes to your mind is you, that's fine. But if you just take a minute and not react but learn how to respond, take two steps back and think about what you're getting ready to do and then respond according to what the Word says. Let the Word begin to jump. It may not initially jump to the forefront, but once you have time to think about it, you should already be calculating from the Word of God what does the Scripture have to say about that. It's not what Jesus would do. It's what the Word was said, was said to do. But it is what Jesus said to do because He is the Word. And now I'm going to respond based Based upon what it says here. How many times am I going to forgive my wife? 70 times 7. She should be saying that to me, actually. How many times you got to forgive me? 70 times 7. 490 times in a day. So I got a lot to go today. 
Praise God. Embracing the vision personally, and number three, and I'm letting you go from this point. We avoid division by transferring the vision to others. By transferring this vision, not only am I coming to a place where I'm knowing what the vision is and embracing what the vision is, but I'm taking what I know, and this is all part of discipleship, whatever you want to call it, but it's giving it to other people. Your problems will begin to shrink if you'll begin to invest in other folks. That's right. You'll have less to, if you'll have less to criticize about if you would do what you're supposed to do. If you would become so wrapped up in this thing and winning souls and loving people and teaching home Bible studies uh, and doing all that you can do. Uh, I know you got to work and I know you got to take care of your family and all that, but you're doing all you can do uh, to help the church to be strong uh, and all these other things. Uh, I guarantee you, you'll be less critical of what is going on. But when you got all this time, your list can become very long. And then I can say, now you can see the complexity of my problem. <laughs> Transferring the vision to others. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, Amplify, Paul tells the young preacher, So you, my son, be strong, constantly strengthened, and empowered in the grace that is to be found only in Christ Jesus. The things, the doctrine, very important teachings, the precepts, all of them in there. Admonitions, what it tells you to do and not to do. The sum of my ministry, Paul said, which you have heard me teach in the presence of many witnesses. Entrust, I want you, Timothy, now to do this. Entrust as a treasure. Carry what I've given you as something valuable. When you sit and I do this, when I go, it doesn't matter who's preaching, who's teaching, whatever. I've only preached five times this year in this church. But I've listened and I've watched. I've taken in my treasure, hiding it so I can use it at the right time and give it at the right time. He said, Take it in. What you've heard me teach in the present many women, entrust as treasure. Notice who you're giving it to to reliable and faithful men, meaning women as well, y'all who will also be capable and qualified to teach others. So it's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about the Lord. And so we get what we get from others. Maybe you're getting something today, and you take what you get, and then you begin to give it to somebody else. But then after you want to expect that when you give it to them that they're faithful and reliable and capable men and women uh, that they're going to be faithful over taking it and giving it uh, to someone else. Uh, And if we do that, uh, we're going to have this continuity going on here. There's not going to be room for division uh, to come in there. Why? Because all of us are doing uh, what we were told to do. Uh, There's something that's happening uh, in the spirit uh, where God is going to get the glory. And if every man will be about their father's business uh, and doing what God told them to do and being about what we're doing here as a body. We're not going to have division here, but then you set the vision when you come home. As for me and my house, uh, my children, uh, my wife, uh, my great-grandchildren, my grandchildren, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Uh, Get your suit on. uh, Get your suit on. uh, Get your jeans on. Get your skirt on. Get whatever it is you wear on. We're going to the house of the Lord. We're going to worship. We're going to teach Bible study. As for me and my house, we're not just going to do all these other things and leave God's work undone. Division. Jesus said a house, a town, a city, a family, kingdom divided against itself, inward fighting, it's doomed, cannot stand. 
It's a principle that cannot be denied. And so here's the deal. If you can't, if I can't take this section and sit it in this section, if I can't take you online and put you anywhere in here, if I can't take this section and make you sit over there with them, just because your brother or your sister's over there, mm. we got to smell some bad cheese. Mm. Mm. That's a hard saying, Pastor. Who can receive it? <laughs> it's like my sister. When I wasn't serving the Lord, right? It was that six and a half year span before I got the Holy Ghost. But I heard a preacher talk about giving one time. And I said, with my limited understanding of the Bible, which was nothing, <laughs> I said, I don't believe people have to give. So I held on to that thought. And I came home one day. I was in California, and I was, I forget where I was. I was somewhere, and I came back to California for a minute. And I was spending time with my sister and my mother. And my sister said something, and I said, you know, Tithing and offering is not even in the Bible. She said, she looked at me. She said, what did you say? And I said it again. She said, you don't even know what you're talking about. I said, I do know what I'm talking about. It's not even in the Bible. She said, you know what? You don't even know the Bible. And I saw myself, and this is what happens when I go that realm. I saw myself, my sister maybe watches, so. but I saw myself taking her head and slamming it through the glass windshield. For real. And I got quiet. I got real quiet. I went home. And I was going home that night. And my mother saw my sister and saw me. And I'm just walking around the house, packing my stuff, getting ready to go. And she said, Michael, what's wrong? I said, nothing, Mom. He said, Gina, what's wrong? She said, it's him. And it's, <laughs> I said, nothing. She said, Michael, come downstairs now. Gina, come over here. Now we're grown. She said, what's wrong? We never told her what it was. But here's what she did. She grabbed my hand. She grabbed my sister's hand. She said, y'all kiss. Kiss your sister. I'm like, this is not the life I live, okay? I'm up here puckering up to kiss my sister because my mom told me to. What she was doing is dispelling the division. She said, not in this house. That's your sister. That's your brother. Not in this house. And that's what I'm saying right here. This is your sister's. These are your brothers. This is your family. And it expands far wider than this. Not in this house. Not in this house. And not in your home. I mean, some of you may need to go home and get your children together, get your wife together, or whatever it is, your husband together, or get together with yourself in a mirror and say, not in this house. Uh, not in this house. Let's all stand to our feet. Not in this house. We will not have division. So here's the deal. If you are here today or you're watching online maybe and you're experiencing division between you and God, between your family, between maybe somebody in the church, between even you and your nation, it's time to get it right. You can't solve every problem. Let me tell you that right away. But you can take care of that inner turmoil on the inside. And that's done through the Spirit of God. So when this altar is going to be open for just a minute for those of you to come. But first I want to say to those of you that may be here for the very first time or watching online for the very first time. 
and there's this wall of partition between you and Jesus Christ. In other words, you're still walking in the state you were born into. Scripture says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, every single one of us. Every man, every woman, everyone on the planet is considered a sinner, but that means they've missed the mark. They're not doing it right. And they're destined to go somewhere where they don't want to go when they die. But the Lord has provided a way of escape, more than escape. He provided a way of new life, a way for you to be born from above. Born again, they call it. Scripture finally just, just tells us that we must be born again of water and of the Spirit. So if you're in this place and you need a Savior, someone to rescue you, deliver you, bring you in, Jesus Christ is that Savior. And if you'll ask that Jesus that, that I'm talking about today and preached about today, if you'll ask him to forgive you of your sins, in other words, you're saying, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior and I believe that Jesus Christ, you're that Savior. That means you're willing to say, I'm going to do it about face. I'm going to start walking in the opposite direction that I've been walking. I'm going to do a 180 degree turn. It's going to be hard to, sh- to, to turn an aircraft carrier around And to go back and to pick something up that has been dropped off, it takes one hour to get that thing to shift directions and go in the opposite direction. You might be that carrier that's in that ship, in that sea, and it may take you a little bit to get around, but you're making up your mind. It's a radical change of mind. You're making up your mind. You're going to turn, and you're saying, I'm going to turn towards Jesus now. Bible says if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You can ask him to forgive you, and guess what he's going to do? He's going to forgive you right now. And if that's you, I'm going to ask you in just a second to come to this altar as a step of faith saying, that's me. Then after you've come to this altar and you've asked the Lord and you've confessed to him that I'm, I'm walking with you now, Lord, don't stop there. Bible says repent but also be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Go to the waters of baptism and let the name of Jesus be placed on you. But also, the circumcision made without hands happens in the water. For you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. He's cutting away the old man. Circumcision made without hands. Simultaneously, when you're buried with him, buried with Christ in baptism. It's not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. The Bible says, if you repent, you baptize in Jesus' name, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise of the Holy Ghost is to you, to your children, to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call everyone in the 21st century to and beyond. But our first step is the altar. Do I want to be right with God? If that's you, I invite you to come stand with me right now. If you're at home, I invite you to take one step in front of your coffee table or wherever it is you're at. If you're in a car driving somewhere, don't worry about it. Just take one hand off the wheel maybe. Keep your eyes open though. But come. I'll wait just a second. That's you. Somebody's going to come and pray with you. But you're the one that's going to have to make that confession with your own lips, with your own mouth. Lord, forgive me of my sin. And I need to make it right with you now. I want to follow Jesus now. I'm giving him my life. I'm giving him my life. That's, that's a big deal. I'm giving you my life. I'm going to walk with you now. If you're in this place and you're, you're encountering division in any area of life and you want God's wisdom, Wisdom is the principal thing. That's the ability to apply knowledge that you have. Wisdom is the principal thing, but therefore, get wisdom. But with all you're getting, get understanding. You need clarity on what to do. And you want to close the division. You want to seal up the division. You want to have unity in whatever area of your life, the church, in your family, on your job, in this world, wherever. I want you to come stand behind these that have come.
Paul said, who's going to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? Height, nor depth, nor power, nor principalities. No, not any living creature will be able to separate us, divide us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. The Lord is on his altar right now dealing with us and helping us to enter in. Every single man, woman, and young person, Lord, uh, that you see in front of you right now, begin to talk to them, Lord, uh, and receive their asking of forgiveness. And, and Lord, you see their need, uh, God, to deal with the divisions uh, that are going on and around. Uh, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, uh, let your Holy Spirit uh, come down in a mighty way uh, and do something great and grand uh, among us. Uh, fill someone, Lord, with the baptism uh, of the Holy Ghost and they will begin to speak in another language in which they've never learned. Let it happen supernaturally and powerfully even as we speak. In the name of Jesus, I pray God that men and women and young people online and even in this room would begin to allow division to be taken out of the equation. I pray for healing, oh Lord Jesus, of circumstances and healing of marriages and healing of hearts for some that want to go into marriage. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll let there be a healing, that there will be no more division. Lord, let your body be united with the head. In the name of the Lord, let this world in which we live in, Lord, I know it's hard, but Lord, you said you would heal our lands if we would pray for them. I'm praying right now with your people that you would heal our land. In the name of Jesus, that's divided. I'm talking about all of terra firma. I'm just not talking about the United States of America. I'm talking about foreign soil as well in the name of Jesus uh, that you would heal our land. Heal our land, Lord Jesus, and allow there to be an awakening uh, of the Spirit uh, on foreign soil. We pray, Lord God, as Dr. Gale and uh, Kyla, Lord God, and Madison are over over in India right now. Lord, strengthen them and give them a word to minister to the churches in India as they go around and give them a word, Lord Jesus. Don't allow them to be divided on any front, but let them have unity so they can tear down the kingdoms of Satan all around in those countries that they're visiting. Oh God, give them the ability. Lord Jesus, you are giving us inroads into different countries. Liberia, Lord Jesus uh, and Uganda Lord God. Uh, Lord you are giving us uh, inroads into these countries uh, and Guatemala Lord God. Uh, oh God in India. Let us bring unity Lord God. Let us bring peace uh, in the middle of turmoil. Lord the government might, might be chaotic uh, and it may be out of order but God we are coming into that situation uh, to bring order Lord God uh, and unity of the spirit. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let the churches, Lord God, uh, be unified. Uh, let every church that you have named and called into a relationship with you in every place that we go, let them have unity, Lord Jesus, uh, and speak the same thing uh, and come to you, Lord God, uh, and lift up your name and keep focused on the head, which is Christ, on the head, which is Christ. We're not going to agree on everything, but we can agree on this, uh, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father, but through him, and by him, and with him, and in him. In the name of Jesus, let it be so, let it be so, let it be so, let it be so. Jesus. 